Praise the Lord. We've been studying the Gospel of John, chapter 1. Now we will be going to verses 14 onwards. The Bible says, And the Word was made flesh, and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory as of the begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. The Bible says that the Word was made flesh. The Word, the Word, as we read from verses 1, it says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. In this verse 14 says, the Word became flesh. So the Word, the Word, actually the Word is Spirit. God is Spirit. Jesus says in John chapter 4 verse 24, it says that God is Spirit, and those who worship Him must worship in Spirit and in truth. Of course, Jesus was Himself a Spirit. Therefore, he has to come in the flesh. Why Jesus need to come in the flesh? That is the question. Why Jesus needed to come in the flesh? Why the, the Word was made flesh? God has to come in the flesh. Because in the flesh, there is blood. Amen? And this blood is not the blood of a man. This is not the blood of a human. This blood is the pure blood of God. See, Jesus has no earthly father. He has no connection with any human beings, except that he was conceived in the womb of his mother Mary through the Holy Spirit. The Bible says that the Holy Spirit overshadowed Mary and Jesus was conceived. And Jesus, the Bible also says in Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, it says that Jesus is the seed of the woman. Jesus is the seed of the woman. Remember that actually woman has no seed. Only the father has a seed. But the Bible says, the seed of the woman shall crush the head of the serpent and the serpent shall bruise his heel. The Bible says, that is a prophecy that Jesus would come in the world, in the flesh, through the woman. Therefore, we read that Jesus was born of the woman, of the Virgin Mary. He is the seed of the woman. Jesus is the seed of the woman. And therefore, the Bible had already prophesied that it's going to be Jesus who will crush the head of the serpent who is Satan himself. Therefore, when Jesus was, as we read from other Gospels, we see that when Jesus was born, it was not an easy time. When Jesus was born, the Bible says that uh, the wise men from the east, they came in search for Jesus. So they thought that the king of kings should be born in the palace where kings dwell. So they went to the king, and this was a time where Herod was the king of Israel. So he went there and in search of Jesus. But the king, he was terrified and he was confused. Who is this king? Because he was the king at the time. So he thought that it was a threat to him. Therefore, he passed a decree to kill all the infants two years and below. He thought of killing Jesus. This was also the plan of Satan because he did not want the deceit from the woman should come. Because he knew that from the beginning, God had already prophesied that the seed of the woman will crush Satan's head. Therefore, he felt threatened by the seed of the woman. Jesus, the word, came in the flesh. No one can stop that because that is the divine plan of God. See, when we speak about the seed of the woman, see, Satan has no idea about the seed. The seed in order to bring life, the seed has to die. The seed has to die in order to bring life. So Satan had no revelation about the seed. See, Jesus spoke about the seed. He also spoke in John 12, 24. He says like this, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, and abide it alone, but if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. He that loveth his life shall lose it, and he that hateth his life 
in this world shall keep it into life eternal. Jesus said, if the seed does not fall into the ground and die, it stays alone. But if it dies, it brings forth much fruit. The seed should die. So Jesus, as a seed, he has to die. Therefore, he has to die on the cross because on the cross, he has to shed his blood. Not the blood of a human, but the blood of God. Therefore, Jesus needed to come in the flesh. He needed to come in the flesh to shed his blood. He has to die. And by dying, he will bring much fruit. Therefore, when Jesus died on the cross, it bare much fruit. What? From Jesus dying, the church is born. Amen? So this is uh, the revelation. Jesus the word was made flesh to shed the blood for the redemption, for the remission of sins. Therefore, Jesus has to come in the flesh. Therefore, the Bible says, And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Therefore, the word was made flesh, and he came among us. Of course, in the flesh, he was 33 years and after that, he resurrected not in the flesh body, but in the glorified body. He was with the disciples for another 40 days. Yes, Jesus was on planet earth for, in the human flesh for 33 years. Jesus was born and the eighth day he was consecrated in the temple. And then at the age of 12, he preached on the temple, in the temple, when he was 12 years old. And they were amazed. They were astounded by the way that Jesus asked questions and by the Jesus. And when Jesus taught, even the Pharisees, they were surprised to hear the teaching of Jesus. He spoke with authority and with wisdom. So Jesus disappeared from the scene. He came back when John the Baptist saw that Jesus was coming to the river Jordan. He said, Behold, the Lamb of God that taketh the sins of the world. So this is the appearance of Jesus when he came to the water to be baptized by John the Baptist. He started the ministry after the baptism of Jesus. See, the, the most important thing here is Jesus needed baptism. Amen? Jesus needed baptism. Actually, if we question, who is Jesus? Jesus is the Son of God. He is holy or without blemish. He is perfect. But even Jesus needed water baptism. And not only that, after baptism, even Jesus needed the Holy Spirit. So if we who are already in sin, how much more we need water baptism and also the baptism of the Holy Spirit. We need the Holy Spirit. So when Jesus was baptized with water, the Holy Spirit came in the form of a dove and the Father spoke that, Behold, behold this is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. So from there, He went to the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights, being tempted by the devil. And there He came back victorious. And He started the ministry, the first miracle which He did. That was in the wedding feast at Cana Galilee. So he started the ministry there. From there it started till the ministry when he said his last words, Unto thee I commit my spirit. And he died. But not that he died eternally. On the third day he came back to life. And he shocked everyone, surprised everyone. And uh, really even the disciples, they were really glad. Of course, Thomas did not believe because he was not present when Jesus came to the room. But later on, eight days later, Jesus came to meet Thomas, which Thomas said, my Lord and my God. So Jesus came in the flesh. So the Bible says also, if you read from uh, Acts chapter 1, it speaks about Jesus' ascension to heaven. Jesus spoke and gave instructions before leaving planet earth 
after his resurrection. So the Bible says that Jesus was taken up from the Mount Olives. If we read from uh, chapter 1 verse 11, it says, okay, let me read from verse 9. It says, and when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up in a cloud, receive him out of their sight. And when they looked steadfastly towards heaven, and as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall come in like manner as you have seen him go into heaven. So these angels said, as you have seen him going up in the same manner, in the like manner, he's going to come back again to planet earth. Therefore, we are waiting till now, the second coming of Jesus Christ. He had come in the flesh. He had come as a poor boy. He had come in as a lamb. He came in his humility. But he's going to come back not as a lamb, but as a lion. He's not going to come back as a, it is a weak or a feeble uh, person, but he's going to come in his glory and his splendor. We are waiting for that. So the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. In Jesus, there is grace and truth. Grace and truth. The Bible says in Jesus, there was grace and truth. What is grace? Before that, it was Moses. Moses had the law. The Bible says, if we can read forward, it says, John bear witness of him and cried, saying, This was he of whom I spoke. He had come after me and was preferred before me, for he was before me. John spoke that, of course, I was before him. I came before him, but he was before me. John testified of what Jesus testified of himself. The Bible says that when Jesus was being questioned by the Pharisees and by the people, if we read from John chapter 8, verses 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, it says, Yet ye have not known him, but I know him. And if I should say, I not know him, I should be a liar unto you. But I know him and keep his sayings. Jesus was telling that I know the Father. And if I say that I do not know the Father, it means that I'm lying. I am not lying at all, Jesus said. I'm telling you the truth. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day and he saw it and was glad. See, Jesus said, Abraham... Rejoice to see my day. And he saw it and he was glad. See, Jesus appeared to Abraham. He was Melchizedek. And when Melchizedek came to meet Abraham, Abraham was so delighted. The Bible says that he gave his one ten and he worshipped Melchizedek. Jesus, Melchizedek, the king of Salem which means peace. Salem, which means peace. So he saw, Abraham saw Jesus. And then what did the people say? Then the Jews said unto him, Thou art not yet 50 years old, and thou hast seen Abraham. Said, you are not yet 50 years old. How can you say that you have seen Abraham? Jesus said unto them, Verily I say unto you, Before Abraham was, I am. He said, before Abraham was, I'm already there. Before he was born, before he was conceived in his mother's womb, I was there. I was before Abraham. And they were all astounded. The Bible says, and they took up stones and cast at him. But Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple, going through the midst of them. So he passed by. The people could not believe at all to this fact that Jesus said, I was before Abraham. See, even John the Baptist said, 
Of course, I was born before Jesus, but Jesus was before me. So here it speaks about the divinity and the eternity of Jesus. Jesus said, I am the first and the last. Jesus said, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. Jesus is eternal. He was with the Father from the beginning. He was the Word of the Father. He was the Word of God. And He was with God and He is God. The Bible says, if we read verse 16, it says, And of His fullness we have received and grace for grace. Hallelujah. So beautiful. It says, And of His fullness have all we receive and grace for grace. We can also turn to Colossians chapter 1, verse 19. The Bible says, For it pleased the Father that in Him should all fullness dwell. Which means, in Christ, there is no lack. Amen? In Christ, there is no lack. Therefore, Jesus said, I have come to give you life. And life in its abundance. Because in Jesus, there is no lack. There is no lack of peace. There is no lack of grace. There is no lack of joy. There is no lack of salvation. There is no lack which people on earth, as human, we lack so much. Therefore, Jesus is our need. Amen? In Him, we find everything. In Him, there is satisfaction. In Him, there is joy. In Him, there is grace for grace. You can also read from chapter 2 verse 9 For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily In him, it means in Christ Dwells all the Godhead bodily Which means in him dwells the Father In him also dwells the Son In him also dwells the Holy Spirit Amen? Amen? So Jesus himself is God Hallelujah Therefore, the Bible says, if you read from Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, it speaks about Jesus. The Bible here says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. A child, and now he becomes a son. And the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, then the mighty God, see, the child becoming the son, and he is now God. The Bible says, the mighty God, and also the everlasting Father and the Prince of Peace. Praise the Lord. Who is Jesus? He is the child, he is the son, he is the counselor, he is wonderful. His name shall be called Wonderful because full of wonders is only in Jesus. There are seven wonders in the world, but in Jesus, it's all. He's the wonder of wonders. Amen? Therefore, there's one song we say, He is the wonder of wonders. Therefore, in Him, the world wonders. That's why they're just looking at Him, you know, being blank, without understanding who He is. Therefore, some of them, they just feeling so blank, therefore they don't want to receive Him as who He is. But thank be to God that He has revealed us that we understand who Jesus is. Really, He is the wonder of wonders. He is also the counselor. There is no counselor in the world greater than Jesus. Amen? He is the greatest counselor. Therefore, when you need counseling, go to Jesus. Hallelujah. He will counsel our soul. He will counsel our hearts, our mind, our spirit. And He will give us His peace and His joy. The Bible says that, and the government will be upon His shoulder. Amen. The government will be upon His shoulder. This speaks about the church. He is the head. We are the body. So, the government, He has given unto us. We are His body, the shoulder of Christ. Therefore, He has given us the governance. And therefore, the Bible says that these signs shall follow you 
Those who believe in me, you shall cast out demons. You shall trample upon snakes and scorpions and over all the powers of the enemy and nothing shall harm you. And he has given us to be the title and the rank of being kings and priests. Amen. And he said that you shall you know, speak in new tongues. You shall hold the serpent. Even if someone poisons you, you shall not die. Amen. The Bible says that even Paul was being bitten by a snake, but a viper. All of that island in Melita they saw, and they thought that Paul would die and say, hey, he is the greatest criminal. See, even the snake did not leave him. He shook the snake and he threw it in the fire. And they were just waiting, when will Paul collapse? But Paul did not collapse. Later on, they came to Paul and started worshipping Paul. They say, you are a god. Because we know that type of snake. It is so dangerous. If that snake bites anyone, no one would ever survive. Paul was being blood washed. Hallelujah. Even the snake, even the poison of the snake could not kill him, could not harm him because he had the power and authority of Christ. Amen. Therefore, if we are his shoulder, his body, the government is upon us. His name is called Wonderful Counselor. The Almighty God, the Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. Therefore, Jesus, as been, we read in Colossians chapter 2, verse 9, it says, For in Him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Hallelujah. Jesus is God Himself. Therefore, when we read, as we proceed, John, For the law was given by Moses. But grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. The law came through Moses. Moses went to the Mount of Sinai. There he met God and God instructed him to write. And God gave him actually the, the, the two tablets which wrote about the Ten Commandments. Of course, he came down. He was angry. He saw the people worshipping the golden calves. He broke the, the tablets. He wrote again the tablets. Five, five, the ten laws of Moses. And the law was being introduced by Moses. But the Bible says here, grace and truth came by Jesus. Through Jesus. Hallelujah. Grace. What is grace? Grace is like when you did an exam. And you missed the mark to pass. And the teacher gave you a grace mark and you passed. That is grace. Amen. By our human effort, we have already failed. But it is by grace we have succeeded. That is the grace of God. Which means we have failed from all our sight. We have, have failed. But it is the grace of Jesus that saved us. That makes us righteous. Amen. That makes us to be holy and to make us just as he is. Because the Bible says, if we come to Jesus, we have to come just as we are. And I remember the prodigal son coming back to home. The father never asked of what he had done, where he had spent his money, because he never wanted to ask the past. He just wanted to make him new through his coming, through his repentance. Therefore, he gave him the cloth of righteousness gave him the ring in his finger and also gave him the new pair of shoes in his feet. That is the grace of God. That is the picture of God, the picture of the Father. When we come, He gives us grace. He does not condemn. He does not throw us. But He receives us just as we are in order to make us just as He is. The Bible also says here, grace and truth. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and life. Jesus is the only preacher. Jesus is the only teacher. Whatever you may say, He is the only one who claims that I am the way, the truth, and life. John 14, 6. Jesus is the truth. Why? Because He is the truth. 
And he says, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Chapter 8, verse 32. And verse 36, it says, if the Son sets you free, you are free indeed. And Jesus is the Son. Jesus is the truth. And if you shall know the truth, the truth shall set you free. So we receive the truth and the truth is no one else but Jesus himself. Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus is the truth. He is grace and he is the truth. Okay, verse 17 it says, For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. We can also read from uh, uh, Romans chapter 5 verse 21. It says that, That as sin had reigned unto death, even so, my grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. It says that as sin had reigned unto death, when Jesus Christ died on the cross, he took death and died to death. Which means sin has no power upon a believer anymore. Amen? Sin exists because there are three natures in a man. That is a natural being of a man. The first nature is he's born as a natural man. So therefore some men are good, some men are bad. So that is nature. Second, there is a sin nature. Man has a sin nature which he needs, a divine nature. So there are three natures in man. So, being natural, being in sinful, in the sinful nature, this sinful nature in Christ, it no longer reigns upon that person, but the person reigns upon that sin nature. It exists. It did not die. Of course, it has no power at all, but it exists. Therefore, in order to succumb, in order to overpower it, we should have the divine nature of Christ. If not, the sin nature is always there to rule in a person's life. Therefore, we need devotion. We need to read the Word of God. We need prayers so that our life will be strengthened every day so that sin would be under our feet, not to be over our head. Amen? Amen. Therefore, we need to be serious because this is a serious thing. Okay, we can read also from chapter 6, verse 14. It says, For sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. Amen? So it speaks the same thing. That we are not under the law, but we are under grace. We thank the Lord. We thank Him so much that He was the one who set us free from the law of sin. And He has given us grace. That through Him, that we may reign over this sinful nature. Amen? We can read also from John chapter 18, verse 37. Everyone that is of the truth, hear it, Jesus' voice. Okay, let me read uh, from 36. My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight that I should not be delivered to the Jews? But now my kingdom is not from here. Pilate therefore said unto him, Thou art a king then. Jesus answered, Thou sayest that I am a king. Are you a king? Jesus said, You said, Yes, I am a king. Thou sayest that I am a king. To this end I was born. And for this cause I came into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. Every one that is of the truth heareth my voice. So Jesus came into the truth because there's so much falsehood, so much of false teaching. People have been believing in gods and goddesses, numericals, gods and goddesses, thinking that they are the truth. But Jesus came into the world to bear witness of the truth. And he said, those who believe my words, they have believed the truth. Amen? Amen. There is no other truth, but Jesus is the truth. If we don't believe, then we're saying that Jesus is a liar. We make him a liar or we make him 
as an insane person that we don't trust him. But because we know that Jesus is the truth, therefore we listen to his voice because he is the truth. Verse 18, it says, No man had seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, he had declared him. Who had ever seen God? Has any man seen God? No. Who had seen God? Only the begotten Son. Amen? He is God. He had seen Himself. He came from the Father. He is the Father. He is the truth. And there is no other truth but Him. Therefore, the Word of God says, if you read from Matthew eleven twenty seven, here the Bible says, All things are delivered unto me of my Father, and no man knoweth the Son but the Father. No one knows the Son. Jesus says, No one knows me except the Father. Neither knoweth any man the Father save the Son, and he whoever is of the Son will reveal him. Amen. Jesus says, Only the Father knows the Son, and only the Son knows the Father. No one. Because He came from the Father. Jesus is of the Father. He is the Father. Very confusing, right? Let us read Psalms 2 verse 7. I will declare the decree the Lord has set unto me. Thou art my Son. This day I have begotten thee. See, the Bible says that God speak about having a son. He comes from the bosom of the father, not from the stomach of the mother. He was not born from the stomach of a mother having a, a biological father, but Jesus came from the bosom of the father. He came from the heart of the father. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. So no one has ever seen God but Jesus himself. Exodus 33, 20, verse 20. And he said, Thou canst not see my face, for there shall no man see me and live. God says, No man can see me. If anyone had seen me, that man shall not live. But thank Jesus. He is of the Father. He is the Father. He had come, but no one died. But anyone who looks at Him shall be saved. The Bible says that fiery serpents came to bid them, and they were dying on the wilderness. Some of them died. Some of them, they were suffering because of the venom of the snake. So Moses asked the Lord, what shall I do? Moses heard the voice of God saying, you shall make a bronze serpent. And in that bronze serpent, you hang it up on a tree and if anyone looks to the bronze serpent, that person shall be healed. This is the picture of Jesus Christ. In John chapter 3, verse 15 says, as Moses lifted up the serpent, so the Son of God shall be lifted up. Hallelujah. This is the picture of Jesus Christ. I will read chapter 3 from 14. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believed in Him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believed in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. If anyone have seen God in the Spirit, God being in the Spirit, that person would die. But Jesus, He came in the flesh that anyone who looks at Him, they will all be saved. Hallelujah. This is amazing. And we thank God that we should always look to Him. Therefore, Colossians chapter 3, verse 1, it says, If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. 
for ye are death and your life is hid with Christ in God. Hallelujah. Set our eyes on things that are above. This is the word of God. Let us always set our eyes on Jesus. Let us fix our attention to Jesus wherever we go, wherever we are. But first, our eyes should be on Jesus Christ. Let us look to God in prayer. Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you for your word, your everlasting word, your revealed word through us, Lord, through us, through the Holy Spirit that has been revealed to us, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, because it is your word that gives us understanding. It gives us more of you, Lord, that we can know more and more about you. Thank you, Jesus, for your word. Thank you, Jesus, for your revelation. Thank you, Lord, for your power and thank you, Lord, for your authority. Thank you, Lord, for making us known who you are and who are we in you. And thank you, Jesus, for your love that anyone who looks at you, yes, Lord, that person shall be saved. Yes, we look unto your grace. We look unto the truth, Lord, because it is only through you that we receive, Lord, salvation. Let the world, Lord, we pray at this time. Let the world look to you. Let the world, Lord, hallelujah, instead of looking, Lord, to the idols and to the gods and goddesses of this world, let their eyes be turned to you, Jesus. Yes, Lord, open their eyes that they may see you and you alone, Lord. The risen and the, the, the risen Lord, hallelujah. The high and lifted up, Lord. Yes, Lord, let me see you, Lord. Jesus, I believe that through this word, many will be touched. And I say, speak to television. In the name of Jesus, I speak healing, the spiritual healing of their eyes, Lord. I speak healing. And Lord, I pray that the scales, Lord, that has blinded them for so long, in the name of Jesus, all the scales, the spiritual scales will fall out. And I pray healing, Lord, to this world. And I pray healing, Lord, to people and to the lives, Lord. Hallelujah. Because without Jesus, there is no salvation. Your word, Lord, is a light, Lord. Your word, yes, Lord, is a lamb. And without your word, Lord, without believing your word, we are lost. We are lost. Thank you, Jesus, for you are the truth. And we believe in you because you are the truth. Thank you, Jesus, for your word. I pray for each and every one of us. Those who need healing, be healed in the name of Jesus. Those who need salvation in the name of Jesus. When you believe in the name of Jesus, you are saved from today. When you believe with your heart, you confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord, you are saved from today. It's so easy. It's so easy. Rather than to give our blood and giving our lives, Lord, you have given us, Lord, the least of the least to do, and that is just to believe in you with all our hearts. Yes, Lord, thank you, Jesus, for saving us for healing us in your precious name, Jesus. Amen and amen.